you doing, John? Good to see you. Good. You were a River's got a lot more current than we'd expected, so John is going to get in and try to paddle up alone, see how hard it is to go against the current. If we can do it, then that's the way we're going, and we're going to end up at the lake. If not, we're going to uh, go into the bridge here and go downstream, find a spot, and uh, hike the road back to camp. We're in the wetlands. I hope you guys can see this. The bottom of the lake is only maybe three foot down, but it's solid ice. We got as far as we can get with the ice. I'm gonna take a quick scout and see if we can find a decent damn spot. It's definitely firewood. It was a pretty steep hill, but at the top it levels out pretty good. Check it out. Nice forest. So I think we'll I'll go down and let them know. Bring all our stuff up. Oh, that's good we get that on video. <laughs> All the stuff we brought with us, check it out. Sherry's cooking some gloves. Hey guys, welcome to Live Outside. We're here in the Adirondacks. Left the house around 7 a.m., left New Hampshire around 7 a.m. My wife, Sherry, longtime friend of, friend of mine, Steve, he's with us as well. Um, drove out to the Adirondacks, had a little precarious uh, canoe, getting the canoes in and getting the, getting the gear and seeing if we're gonna be able to, to flow in. There's been a, a, a paddle in. There's been a ton of rain. Uh, all the rivers are up and beyond that, the ponds aren't melted yet so we were just able to get in here and uh, find a spot to get our gear up and uh, have a nice campsite so we got a lot to talk about we got uh, the Sierra Designs tent I got a new uh, hen sorry war bonnet ridge runner with an AquaQuest tarp I want to talk about some Bark River knives that John and Steve have Sherry's doing a ton of cooking for us it'll be a good awesome. time sausage peppers and onions we got uh, smoked pork chops with some sort of apple stuffing, um, some uh, Asian beef with some green beans, a lot of awesome cooking. It's going to be a great weekend. We're going to be here for three days, so uh, I'd really, with all the firewood we're going to be processing, all the awesome meals we have lined up, my wife's going to be cooking for us. Uh, I want a nice baton for the weekend, for, uh, for the nice long weekend for processing firewood, so that's what I'm working on right now. So guys, I want to show you this real quick. Um, backpack and grill. There's a bunch of these on Amazon. Well, there's actually only a few on Amazon you, you can get. Um, one brand I'm not familiar with, but this is a Cole Coglins. It's got, I like it because it's got the uh, stand for it, so you can keep it above the ground. You don't have to put logs or rocks under there to keep it. It's nice and small for your backpack, but this is only $4 on Amazon. And then I found these waterproof canvas bags. Uh, it's, it's actually a bag for tools, screwdrivers and stuff, and it fits right in perfect. So not only will it keep it clean in your backpack, but 
um, all the edges on this are really sharp, so when you put it in the bag, you don't have to worry about it tearing or anything. I'll put the links in the description below. Sausages are done. Oh. Right from the backyard. Oh, look at that. This is living. You don't get this on Amazon. <laughs> I just finished up a little crane here for my wife to use. She'll be able to swing the stuff in and out. Get at it without reaching over the fire. We can adjust it up and down, in and out. Just figure we're going to be here for three days. It's worth putting a little effort into the setup. You look like the Sphinx. <laughs> Hey, night, night number one in the new hammock. Got my tarp, AquaQuest tarp, my little lamp. It's all good. You got earbuds in. I got an apartment. Yeah, I got my earbuds tell, in. Tell everybody one more time what kind of sleeping bag is that? <laughs> Heading in, Steve? Jerry's cooking up some eggs and cheese to go with that bacon. Cannot wait. English muffins too. So here's what happened. Typically, this is a Sawyer Mini Wadi Filter. Typically when it's cold out, we'd stick this in a bag with a hand warmer, but we didn't do that this time. I didn't think it was gonna get down to freezing and it did, and this froze. So we learned we're not supposed to freeze this because it, it kind of renders the filter unusable. We did put water through it and you can see, I hope you can see in the camera that this is still pretty yellow. The water from the lake was dirty. Um, uh, we're not going to drink this. We're going to have to boil it and this thing is pretty much junk. Um, but you learn, right? Don't freeze it. I wanted to give you guys an update on uh, the Sierra Designs Mountain Guide uh, tarp shelter. A couple things since our last uh, review, the Lone Ranger review. We, uh, we actually got to use it some. This is the pole that comes with it. And as the review said, um, this looks pretty straight. I spent quite a bit of time straightening it out um, after it sat out and it was only two or three inches of snow. It was very, very heavy snow. And this was really, I mean, much more than that. It was significantly bowed like a banana. And I, uh, I rescued it. I brought it along, but all I did was, for the, this is the first time I used it, I just used it as kind of a measuring device. And we actually cut a tree and put a tree stick in there, uh, put a branch in there to hold it up. So yeah, no go on the pole. It's definitely not heavy enough for it. Second thing is the stakes that come with the tarp. We didn't use any of them. Um, they're basically, there's a hard pack of snow on the ground. Basically useless. We were able to you just stick it in the snow it wants to come out. We end up using snow anchors and or cutting our own uh, larger stakes out of sticks um, and pinning it down. Now those are the bad things. The good things, the zipper has just been flawless. In and up, up and down, no problems. Uh, last night, 25 to 30 mile an hour winds, it was very, very windy and held up fine, no problems. Um, plenty roomy in here. Really, really happy with the shelter itself and how it performed for us, you know, protecting us from the ele elements. Uh, we went around, put a little bit of snow on the skirt, and we got snow flurries last night, and it just kind of added to it. It was it was good. Uh, so I'm real happy with the tent, but stakes are not going to work, and the pole's not going to work. So really, it's about the fabric in, uh, uh, for this purchase. We're going to go for a quick walk, see what's out there, try to find some campsites that uh, we can come back to later on in the season. There's supposed to be some out there. can't get away. We're in the middle of the Adirondacks. In the middle of nowhere. No trails, no anything. You can't get away from human activity. It's like impossible. These woods are beautiful. It goes around. Sun's out over the lake now. Absolutely awesome. 
not nearly as cold as it was last night. Pretty warm out here now. Wasn't even a lot of energy doing that walk, but it's nice. Standing there in the sun, you can actually feel it. The snow got really packed down from walking all over it, and it started to get ice over and get really slippery, so. We tried putting pine needles down uh, to kind of make more grip, but it didn't work, so instead we used twigs, and it worked really, really well, so now we're not slipping. My wife Sherry is uh, cooking us some, I don't know, what is it, pork chops, and you got a stuffing in there with apples, and what kind of, onions. apples, onions, what kind of glaze? A balsamic vinegar glaze. But she was worried about the pot being too hot, so we kind of built up a little platform under the fire here. And uh, those pork chops are from our pigs, but they've also been smoked. Uh, it does dry them out a little bit, but that's part of the reason why she's um, adding the, the moist stuffing. But uh, man, the smoked pork chops are really, really good if you can get them cooked without drying out. So right now I'm browning both sides, trying to get it even. Then I'm going to dump some of this fat out and cook the apples and onions, caramelize them. And uh, then I'm going to deglaze the pan with some balsamic vinegar and some chicken broth. And pour it over. And I've sliced these down the middle ahead of time so that I can stuff them with the apples and onions. It's going to be good. Help yourself. Got some sliced onions. Now some sliced Granny Smith apples, so it's not too sweet. Now I'm going to add some chicken broth to the pan. With some balsamic vinegar. that back on the fire and let it reduce a little. All done. Oh, man. Oh my lord. Oh, unbelievable. Jerry did a phenomenal job. Like we just had Thanksgiving. This is my buddy Steve. We go way, way, way back. Spent a lot of time in the woods together. Um, you might notice that we're looking pretty similar. The uh, these are these are both jackets that we have made out of uh, it, an Italian officer's wool blanket. There's a lot of wool blankets on the market, but the Italian officer's blanket. You got to make sure you get a genuine one. They're starting to go for pretty good money. I think they're like. Have you been looking? They're like over a hundred bucks now, I think. Yeah, you used I to bought, be able to get them for cheap. Yeah, when I bought these two, they were, I think it was $90 for two of them. Yeah, they keep they're creeping like up. I got my... bucks a piece. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you can't get them cheap anymore, but they're really dense. They're they're really nice. I happen to make one with a with a pullover and uh, uh, rabbit fur around the perimeter in a pocket. He traced out a pattern that he had in... Uh, his his uh, mom is an awesome sewer. I'm just I was just noticing. I'm kind of jealous because she's legitimately much better so much better at it than I am. Um, but they're incredibly warm. Yes, they are incredibly warm. Very so I have this. This is an entire blanket, doubled up the chest, and I also have a, another blanket that's untouched that I just use as my wool blanket. So if you're into if you're into wool blankets or you're into making this kind of stuff, the Italian officer's blanket 
Um, a lot of people talk about them on the reviews. They're legitimately, I've, I've had a bunch of them. These are the better, they're, they're as good as they get. Look at this, Steve. Your mother does such an amazing work. I'm jealous. I can't do that. Look at my shoulder. <laughs> it's held together though. Yeah, it's yeah, doubled it's up. I picked up a new hammock. It's the War Bonnet Ridge Runner. It's a bridge style hammock, which means it has these poles that separate it like something you'd see in somebody's backyard. I was a little worried about the weight of these, but they're not bad at all. Um, I would consider maybe replacing them with sticks and just not take these at all, but I saw some videos that other people made where they tried to do that and it just it doesn't work. Maybe if you modify these clips you might be able to, which is something I'm definitely going to look into. Then I don't have to carry these. But what I like about it is these pockets on the side, they call them saddlebags, one on each side. I keep all my stuff in there at night. I got my glasses, my contacts, my headlamp, bear spray on one side in case I ever need it. Um, and it's a flat laying hammock. You guys know I've talked about that in the past that it's way more comfortable for me. So I tried it last night. It was it was actually very, very comfortable. Had tons of wind. So I had originally had my tarp set up in a porch style where this was square with the hammock in it. It did not work at all, not even close. There was snow blowing in all over me. Today I put it in a diamond style and this will be pulled down tight over me tonight so the wind doesn't get at us, but it's been crazy windy. So I, I was cold last night. Um, the other thing about this is it has a, a net that comes with it, a bug net. It ties up in the pocket down here at the end when you don't need it and then it, a full zipper goes all the way around and there's tie-offs to pull it above your head so it's not coming down on your head. But overall, I, one night in it so far, I think it's very, very comfortable. Um, back to the tarp real quick, War Bonnet sells a tarp made specifically for this hammock. It, it's called the uh, Superfly, I think. It has doors that fold in so it blocks all the wind and snow out. I might look into that later, but this is an AquaQuest tarp. If you're not familiar with AquaQuest, um, they're really, really, really good tarps. John and I sleep under that 10 by 13 one that we have a lot during the winter. I had that thing out in torrential downpours in the White Mountains last year where there's literally buckets of water just held in and, and it didn't leak at all. One thing to note about tarps when you're looking at tarps and one of the things I like most about AquaQuest is they have a waterproof rating. I forget what it's called, but uh, basically look at how many millimeters of water it can support. For a, a tarp to be considered waterproof, it has to hold 1,500 millimeters of water. So that means if you were to put a tube on there, fill it up with 1,500 millimeters of water, that water is not going to leak through. These tarps are rated to 20,000 millimeters, so they are definitely waterproof, way beyond what you need to be considered waterproof. I've never had a problem with it. Um, so I'd, I'd like to keep this if I can, if I can make the configuration work for this hammock. I'll stick with this. If not, I'll go with the Superfly. I made this marinade. I toasted all these sesame seeds low and slow to develop the nutty flavor. <laughs> so I have to take the beef out. I'm going to just let it rest in here while I cook the veggies in this juice. Green beans are all done. it all heat up again because it's cold out. There you go. Oh yeah. Very, very good. Rice, green beans, beef. I brought my chopsticks because I knew we'd need them. So I'm all excited. I got a Bark River Bravo 1.5 and uh, I got it all sharpened up. I made my sheath for it. And I'm all excited to use this. And my buddy Steve shows up. He just can't help me have my moment. So he shows up with a Bark River Dakar. We got a raging fire, and uh, we're turning in for our last night here in the Adirondacks. It's been an awesome time. We got a lot of stuff packed up. Bags are over there, ready to go for the morning. Um, Sherry's inside there, like a what do you call that? Chrysalis. 
A chrysalis? <laughs> chrysalis. A chrysalis. <laughs> yeah, one of those things that turns into a butterfly. <laughs> She's got a hot water bottle in there somewhere. I'm going to be over there in the corner. And Steve is putting like 17 layers of socks on. Because I have bad circulation to my feet. And then he's going to bed. And we're going to spend another night here inside the uh, Sierra Designs Mountain Guide tarp, which I'm growing fond of. Yeah, All right. This is very nice. Good night, guys. So that's it, guys. Good night for me. Guys, thanks for watching. It was an awesome three-day trip. Breaking through some ice this morning to get out, but it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, we just made clear water. Everybody's made it out alive, and it was just a really, really gorgeous place. We didn't see a soul the entire three days. Um, had the had the entire area to ourselves. Just on, spin around. Let me see how gorgeous this is. All right, we're gonna uh, paddle the rest of the way out and uh, load the boats, get it loaded up in the old Land Cruiser and make the four or five hours home. And don't forget to subscribe and like. That actually helps generate more uh, advertisements for YouTube. And like you know, we are doing what we can to raise some money for Nature's Classroom to donate to kids scholarships so they can learn what it's like to be out in nature. Um, all that stuff helps, so like, subscribe, Follow our videos. See you later.